In this video, we'll show you how to add Apple CarPlay to your vehicle. This is Apple CarPlay. We got many applications. We actually got four pages of applications or even five. As you rotate the joystick, you go through the application pages. Just like in 2019, Acura MDX. Connect your Android phone and then rotate to enter Android. Android Auto CarPlay is highlighted. Press enter and you're entering the Android Auto world. You control everything with the joystick. So let's go ahead and look at this. We got HDMI and we got our Apple TV. Apple TV is pretty convenient because you can use the remote to control it. It's all in HD quality. This video features the Honda Pilot years 2012 to 2015 as shown on the Acura MDX. The Honda Pilot and the Acura MDX have identical screens. All NavTool products are 100% designed and manufactured in the USA. Please support American jobs. NavTool, established in 2002. This interface does not replace factory radio or factory screen. This interface enhances the factory screen with features like Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, HDMI mirroring, and cameras. All factory features work the same as before. This interface is see-through, meaning the vehicle does not detect that the interface is installed in the car. This is a two-part video. Part 1, product demonstration. Part 2, product installation. Entire interface is controlled with the factory knobs. Set the radio to auxiliary, so you have the USB auxiliary. Don't forget you had to run the wire, as shown. Now you have auxiliary is working. To enter the interface, press and hold the cancel button for a few seconds. Now you are in the interface. Interface has the following feature. Please keep in mind that we're making this video a little bit from the top so that you can see the controls and that you can see the entire uh, the entire panel. So we're gonna go ahead and show you how everything works. Once again, so you can see better, we have to make the camera at an angle so you can see the screen and you can see the controls. To change between the interface and the factory screen, you press and hold the cancel button. You got options HDMI, CarPlay and Android Auto, and camera inputs. You got a rear camera which is factory, so when I'm using that, you can add a front camera. The way the front camera operates is out of reverse, and to drive, the front camera stays on up to 10 seconds. That's good for parallel parking, or you can turn it on and watch it at any time. Left and right cameras, while you're driving, you can switch. In this particular model, left and right camera cannot be activated automatically, but you can add them to watch your left and right blind spot. You can also use the camera inputs for the uh, DVD player. Now, let's go ahead and demo some of the features. So, HDMI. To HDMI, you can connect the following interfaces. For this demo to HDMI, we have connected Apple TV. You can also connect smartphone mirroring, such as iPhone and Android, wired or wireless. We're connecting the HDMI and Apple TV for this demo, okay? So let's go ahead and look at this. We got HDMI and we got our Apple TV. Apple TV is pretty convenient because you can use the remote to control it. It's all in HD quality. The camera can be capturing it at the angle. So it might be a little bit bright or brighter than you expected, but as a matter of fact, this is 100% HD quality. And because this, those are HD screens, so you got all your favorite stuff that you can watch on the screen and it is all in 100 HD quality let me change it for you so you can take a look there you go as you can see every letter everything is sharp in the car you will see it in 100% HD quality again because we capture it from the top angle it might look a little bit different than you would expect but it, actually it will be 100% HD quality now this is HDMI to get out of the HDMI just simply go ahead and use this twist it one time and it's going to go back into the main menu CarPlay demo in order to get into the CarPlay rotate the jog until you get into the CarPlay mode enter this is CarPlay this is Apple CarPlay you got many applications. We actually got four pages of applications or even five. As you rotate the joystick, you go through the application pages. Just like in 2019, Acura MDX. 
you got different settings. So one of the things you can do if you want to rearrange the application, you go into your phone and you go into your phone settings, go into general, go into CarPlay, and in the side CarPlay you can rearrange apps. So I want to bring Waze application to the front. So I go, I find my Waze application, I drag it all the way to the first page. I want it to be right next to my phone calling, right there. So as you can see, now Waze is right here in display. Now, you control everything just like in the 2019 Acura MDX with the original joystick. You want to get out, there are two ways to get out of this. You can go into CarPlay and it's going to get out. This is the back sign or you can press map guide button and it will get out. Cancel obviously goes back so let's say if you're now playing application and you want to go out you can press it back. This is services your back. Obviously this is your audio. We're not going to play any audio for copyright reasons. And now info phone button, you press this. This brings up your uh, Siri. You're not listening to the music app. Siri. Siri, now playing. Okay, paused. So it listens to your commands. You can also obviously control all the applications. So if we go into any of those applications, let's say I want to go into my tuning radio. Enter the tuning radio, I want to go into music. I want to go into global news. And it's going to open up whatever the application is doing, it's going to load. Okay, so now we're in LT, which is much better. Wherever you go into, so if I go into the Rachel Matter show, and now inside, if if it had any shows, it would play it. Let's simply go into local radio, and the local radio is going to load up the list of local radio stations. And let's say we're going to go ahead and play one of those stations, and in here, in now playing, you can see exactly what is playing. So you can see evening jazz is playing. We can pause it, it's paused, we can play it, it's playing, pause it, you can go 30 seconds back, so if I'm playing it, I can go back and forth, 30 seconds back, or 30 seconds forward, okay, Pros in the note. Start with this is the commercials playing, Pros obviously all the apps have commercials, so we're going to get out of it because it wants to list the commercial until we go in, now, I have Waze, I have Google Maps here. Basically all the applications that CarPlay supports and all controlled with a factory joystick. You can call someone if you want. He has calling. You also have um, your messages, your maps. So let's go into Waze for example. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and enter Waze. You got all your controls, you got favorites, audio controls. Over here you got your zoom in, zoom out. And all control with them, if you can see I'm doing all the controls with the joystick. Over here you can do your reports. Well, I have no GPS here, but that's where you would do all the reports in here. So if you want to report the nearby police, etc., etc., this is where it's all reported. Now, one thing to remember, this is how CarPlay works. This is my home screen. If I go into Waze, it will open up the Waze. But if I would go get out, it would get out. Because this is how whatever app is running here, you get extra features on the phone. So if you're running Waze, you're actually getting extra features on here that you see. So over there is a map, but over here you get extra features. So all apps have extra features on your phone. I don't know why it's still not saved, but for some reason they added that feature. And so now you can get out of here. Obviously, if any app appears in your phone and it's CarPlay supported, it will appear here. You never have to worry about the updates. All the updates happen inside your phone. So today or 10 years from now, whenever CarPlay is updated, automatically updated here, you never have to worry about updating the interface. Same thing with application. Application is updated, it's instantly here. New application release, it's instantly here. So CarPlay is a CarPlay is a CarPlay in any car. 
this is the same CarPlay that you would find in a 2019 Acura MDX with a factory controller. It would be controlled the same way in a 2019 MDX using the factory controller. And that basically completes the demo of Apple CarPlay. Now let's demo Android Auto. Connect your Android phone and then rotate to enter Android. Android Auto CarPlay is highlighted. Press enter and you're entering the Android Auto world. You control everything with the joystick. You got the following options. By voice you can say, hey Google, I want pizza. Okay, handing off to Waze. Here are the search results for I want pizza. As you can see, the mouse is on the bottom right now. If you see any lines on the screen, they're not there in the real picture. This is just how camera is capturing the image on the screen. You got your phone calls here. You can call somebody if you want to. Now we're in the top menu. You can read out the numbers. You can see they're highlighting. Now, let's say you want to go into the bottom menu. All you got to do is press up one time and you're entering the menu on the bottom. Now you see it doing, going through the highlights. Let's go into the audio menu. You got your radio stations. If you press up one time, you're gonna end up in the menu and this is highlighted again. And if you wanna change the app, you press one more time, we got a bunch of apps. So in this case, we got Amazon Music, Google Mute Play, Spotify, and TuneIn Radio. If you wanna get out, go into a different option you either enter, so we're gonna enter back into Spotify, you know, we're not logged in, but you can log in into Spotify. If you wanna go into one of the menus, press up. The last one is to exit. This is returns to the main menu. However, in this car, you can also return by simply pressing map guide, and it gets out. So, press map guide, just to get out. Again, to enter the bottom menu, press up one time. It enters the menu. You got your ways. And again, if you press up, you see it highlights the map, and you can switch between Waze and Google Maps. Those are the two supported maps by Android. If you wanna go back into calling, you can go back into calling, and all the other features are also available for you. So Android Auto is Android Auto in every car. Android Auto only lives inside your phone. So basically, it only lives right here, in your phone. When there's an update, it updates here. You never have to worry about updating it there. It only updates here. If there's a new available compatible app for Android Auto, it will automatically appear there. There's nothing else you need to do. It works just like factory. This is your home screen where everything appears and shows you all the nice stuff here. And obviously the voice, hello Google or hey Google. What is the weather now? It's currently 12 degrees and clear in Hazlitt. Today, it will be mostly sunny with a high of 29 degrees and a low of 12 degrees. And again, if you want to get out and you want to enter some other feature like an HDMI, right there we got the HDMI video, rotate, go back into Android. It, this is just like factory, just like the Android Auto would be in 2019, Acura MDX. Please keep in mind, to access any of the menus on the left-hand side, you go into this direction right here. So not the right, not top, but this direction. Access the menu and get out. Same thing if you go into the phone calling app. I'm on a phone and you need to access the menu. Go up and you get all the options right here. And if I need to get out, again to the left. And this is, this direction bring, opens up the menu. All right, so you got all the menus opened up in this direction, not up, not the right, but this direction, towards two o'clock. Interface installation. Step one of this assembly, remove the panel on the left of the radio using something like a removal tool like this. Pull the panel out. 
it's just held by the clips so the panel will just easily come out all that's holding this panel are these clips now remove the right side panel keep in mind that at the end of the right side panel there's going to be a screw that you're going to have to remove on that edge over there so just by start from the bottom again same thing you want to just remove this panel out of the location okay once it's on pop go to the other side remove the screw and remove the rest of the panel once the screw is removed pull the panel again it's all held by the clips and at the edge you got this one screw over here this is the screw you're going to remove in order to pop the panel out now you have completely removed the two trim panels now we're going to go back to the middle of the radio now we need to remove the radio it's very easy you just need to remove these screws you got two screws on this side and two screws on this side using a phillips screwdriver go ahead and remove the screws you're removing four screws and make sure not to lose them either use magnetic screwdriver or use something else but make sure not to lose the screws inside there now that the screws are removed you want to take it and switch it into drive and pull on the radio but before you pull on the radio it's easier if you remove this cover here it's just two plastic panels and comes out and you can pull on the radio and the radio comes out now what we do we install the plug and play harnesses in the back of the radio after we install the plug and play harnesses the installation is going to be complete all right so next step is installing plug and play harnesses all interfaces must be updated before use. In some cases, if you do not update the interface, the radio will not even turn on. First, click Find Device. Make sure that the interface is connected to your Windows or Mac computer using a USB data cable. Make sure that you have a data cable and not simply a charging cable. If your interface is connected using a data cable and click Find Device, you will have options appear here. This menu indicates that your unit is connected to the computer properly. First, let's select the software. For this demonstration, we will use a 2013 Cadillac CTS as an example. Click Search. As you see, there is one software available. Highlight the software by clicking on it and click Install. Now we wait for the installation process. Once it's complete, we can move on to Step 2, which is Configure Camera or Video Settings. This process should only take about 30 seconds. Keep in mind we have remote support available up in the top right of the screen. NavTool is able to access your computer and help you along with the process if you're having trouble. When software installation is complete, you will see this screen. Go ahead and click close. Now let's go ahead and move on to step two, which is configure camera settings. The first step, we want to select turn on HDMI wireless CarPlay Android Auto video input. If we have any of these features, we're going to want to select this. On the left side of the screen, we're going to want to select any cameras that were not already equipped in the car. For example, if your car has a factory rear view camera, you do not need to select that. On the right side of the screen, you want to select any factory cameras your car has. For example, if your car came with a factory rear camera, this is where you would select that. So let's say for our demonstrations purposes, our 2013 Cadillac CTS came with a factory rear view camera. However, we installed front, left, and right facing cameras. This is how the configuration should look. Next, we scroll down. On the left hand side, we have forward facing camera settings. You have two options. The first is manual. This means that the forward facing camera can only be turned on manually by the driver. The second option is manual speed check. This option is good for parallel parking. If you put the car in reverse, the rear facing camera will come on. If you put the car back into drive, the front facing camera will automatically turn on at any speed up to 10 miles an hour. On the right hand side you have settings for left and right lane watch cameras. These settings are only for aftermarket cameras that you've added to the car. The first option is manual, which means the cameras can only be activated manually by the driver. The second option is manual without speed check, which means the left and right lane watch cameras can be turned on at any speed. 
The last option is manual with speed check, which means the left and right lane watch cameras are automatically displayed with the use of the left and right turn signals, and your speed is above 50 miles per hour. When all the settings are complete and correct, go ahead and click Save Settings and then Close. Next you have on-screen display settings. These are the settings of the four camera inputs. This is basically the display name for each of the cameras. You can make it input one or front camera, input two or rear camera, etc. If you're using the basic four cameras, front, back, left, and right, we find it's easier to just leave them as the camera name. Also, deselect all of the options on the left regarding overlay text. Once you're happy with your settings, go ahead and click Save Settings. Feature activation is only available in certain vehicles, so go ahead and disregard it. And that's it, you're finished. Go ahead and disconnect the interface from the computer and proceed with the installation. Now that you have programmed the interface, first we're going to install the 8-pin harness. This is the 8-pin T-harness. In the back of the radio, you're going to locate 8-pin T-harness. It's on top. Now that you have located the 8-pin T-harness in some vehicles, it could be 16-pin, so it's either 8 or 16-pin. Depends on the vehicle you have. Now that you unplug 8-pin, you're going to plug in the supplied 8-pin. And the other end is going to plug in back into the radio. Next, we're going to plug in the harness where you have the power wires. So you got the main harness right here. You're going to plug that in back of the radio as well. You're going to locate the same harness. It's on the other side. You might need to unplug the other harness to gain access. So you unplug the harness. So you're going to unplug this kind of connector from the back of the radio. You're going to then plug this back into the radio and you're going to have this where the factory is going to plug in. So. Lock factory in here. Okay, and then the last connector. Is the 28 pin connector. This is your 28 pin connector. Same thing, unplug it from the back of the radio and plug it in. So you're going to unplug this, plug this back into the radio. And then plug the factory into the supply connector. Now you have two connectors left over here. On the main harness, you also got two connectors. You got a 10-pin connector here. You're going to connect the 10-pin connector together. And you got the 24-pin connector, which you're also going to connect together. Oh, sorry, 14-pin connector. Now that you plug everything in, you got one last thing to do. You take the main interface that you just recently programmed. You got two dip switches on the interface. You don't have to worry about them. They could be in any position. It does not matter. All you need to do is plug in the interface here. Plug it in. Once you plug it in, next thing to do is put the ignition on and to check that the radio comes on and everything works. So once you verify that you're able to switch from factory screen into the screen of the car, you know that the interface is working and now you can go ahead and assemble the car and don't forget that you will have to install the microphone from the ceiling down it's a clip and microphone and you will also need to connect the auxiliary audio into auxiliary of the car unless you're doing mirroring or you want to do bluetooth audio so this is the microphone you're going to connect the microphone has a clip let me show you that So this microphone is very small and you can clip it in into the ceiling right behind the mirror and once you clip it in it will just stay there and you will rod the wire through the ceiling 
down through the pillar under the dash and behind the car all right this is very simple installation and the microphone is so small that nobody will ever see it you will just plug in once route it down and it will just stay there just like factory and then auxiliary you will connect from the interface you got the two RCAs you got right here red and white RCAs those are your auxiliary outputs and using this cable cable like this it has two RCAs and a three and a half millimeter jack simply plug this in and this end is going to connect to your auxiliary jack in the car all the factory features will work the same you can also add extra cameras you have manually left and right camera as a lane watch cameras and you got automatic front camera right after reverse fact rear view camera will work as before without any changes now that you know everything is working you can either reassemble the car or simply put the stuff together a little bit and then after you put the car together you will be able to test everything but typically we don't recommend assembling until you test all the features now we're gonna go ahead and test it to see the testing go to the beginning of the video go ahead reassemble the vehicle in the reverse order thank you for watching please click the link on the left to subscribe to the channel or click the link on the right to watch another video.